we started to hear about what was happening in China, the spread of an unknown virus. The alarm bells went off, and I think we knew there was a virus coming. It was a novel virus, which meant that there was no immunity in the human population. It took over 10 years to develop the HIV vaccine that's now in efficacy trials in Africa. It took months to develop the vaccine that is being used against COVID-19. The Reagan Institute was established about a decade ago with the vision of harnessing the immune system to prevent and cure human disease. The initial goal that we set out for ourselves was to make an HIV vaccine. The Reagan Institute had generated an enormous amount of knowledge around HIV, developed by one of the founding members, Dan Baruch, and we were able to harness that to start working on COVID immediately. The goal that we had over the first few months was simply to collect samples from as many locations as possible across the globe. If we could understand what went right in those individuals that survived versus what went wrong in the individuals who did not survive, we thought we could put together a picture of the flavor of immunity that one would want to induce with vaccination in order to get protection from infection. Through the partnership with multiple different laboratories, the Reagan Institute, as well as uh, generous uh, philanthropic support from Terry and Susan Reagan, as well as Mark and Lisa Schwartz, the Reagan Institute was, was able to provide us with seed funding to begin exploring vaccine immunity we largely used a playbook we had developed for HIV and then for Zika virus. We started to work on coronaviruses and producing these recombinant proteins and sharing them with uh, Galit Alter and Dan Baruch. So as we began to build these technologies so we could look at these protective immune responses that were coming up naturally in infection, the vaccine development pipeline was already moving at light speed. So as soon as Dan had samples available from the first mouse studies, and then from the first monkey studies, and then from the first hamster studies, he would essentially send them right over. I was actually driving over in my car every other day going to pick up plasma samples and proteins and different kinds of reagents so that we could move this science faster than we've ever moved science forward before. Well, we know from the studies that have just been completed in monkeys is that this vaccine is actually able to protect primates from becoming infected with COVID-19. That's very encouraging. So a phase one clinical trial to evaluate this vaccine in humans has already begun. It's actually a combined phase one, two trial that's going on at multiple different centers. The goal of this clinical trial is to determine the safety and the immune responses induced by this vaccine. And if this is successful, then we would be in a position together with our partners to launch a large phase three efficacy trial of this vaccine starting in September of this year. We're scientists, we have to be hopeful. <laughs> I'm hopeful that the sheer amount of work that we've done past and present on viruses will help us pave the way for a vaccine. The billion doses that we're planning to generate with Johnson & Johnson is something that's realistic. So I think there are reasons to be, to be very optimistic. But like the other vaccines that are in development right now, all of these need to be tested and shown to be effective I don't see this as a competition. I see this as the scientific community coming together to try and solve the problem.